Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about managing subwoofers just like anything else in acoustics. Room and speaker interaction. We have our room, we have our electronics. There's lots of variables to consider and don't be misled by manufacturers claims that we're the biggest and the best because it's all relative to your room. There is no such thing as big, better, or best when it comes to room acoustics because the room's going to change the sound of your subwoofer speaker anyway. So we have to please the room and make it happy. It's a little bit like Google. <laughs> anyway, buying sub usage. Uh, we have to consider the usage when we're, before we're buying the sub. So what are we using the sub for? Is it two channel? Okay. Is it seven to 10 channels like in home theater? Are we using multiple subs? Okay. What are we looking for in a two-channel subwoofer? Speed definition to match the front two channels. We want it to integrate smoothly with the two channels so that we don't localize it and really hear where it is. So usually the subwoofer and the speakers are made by different manufacturers. So the goal here is to find one that's as fast or as slow as your left and right channels are getting the speed of that additional speaker to coordinate with the speed of the other uh, front channels, the, I mean, sorry, the left, uh, the right channel, then that's, that's a critical factor. What do we want with home theater? Well, we want energy, we want amplitude, we want lots of, uh, the ability to go low and produce lots of energy, long throw drivers. Uh, maybe in two channel, our subwoofers are more shorter throw, uh, thus getting more definition. So let's look at an example here. The difference between a 10 inch and a 12 inch sub can be plus or minus two to three dB more energy for the room. Well, plus or minus two or three dB may not sound like a lot of energy, but when it's low frequency, it's a huge amount. And that can really exacerbate the problems that we're having in the room already and make things much, much worse also make things intolerable. So where we have to either not have a sub in the room or move and get a new room. Room size, everybody asks, what's a good room size for a home theater? And my answer is always anything less than 30 feet in any one dimension is problematic. Okay, well that's from an acoustic standpoint, the half wavelength of 20 cycles, 30 feet. So we want at least a half wavelength run in one dimension. Well, that's really not possible. How many of you out there have a room that's 30 feet in one dimension? Most of you don't. So, but you have to realize that that's kind of the benchmark that we use. So any footage less than that is always going to be a problem. Now, how do we manage those issues? Well, we can, as long as we watch our sizes. We start getting down into the 15s, foot distances in width and stuff like that, 14, 13, that's about your break point right there. You start getting less than 13, 12, just not realistic. It's time to look for a new room. So depending on what we're trying to do with our subwoofers, we got to uh, consider the sub usage in the room. We want to know what kind of system it's going to be in the room. Definitely match the diameter of the low frequency drivers to the room. I mean, don't put 24 inch drivers in rooms that have 3,000 cubic feet of volume. You know, there's a relationship there between volume and dimensions that you have to consider. Room size, the ideal dimension is 30 feet. Anything less than 30 feet is problematic. So we have to treat that and, and, and deal with that. So um, those are three issues in managing subwoofers that uh, you should consider when, when looking at it. Thank you. Point four in managing subwoofers is about acoustical treatment. And there's a lot of confusion in the literature today. Straight off foams and boxes filled with building insulation are not low frequency absorbers. They're middle and high frequency absorbers and they should be used for that purpose. They are not low frequency energy devices unless the box filled with building insulation is very, very, very thick and deep. Six, seven feet 
in some cases so not very realistic so and foams obviously are just not designed at all for for low frequency absorptions and don't let companies tell you that because that's it's just it's insulting when you understand the physics behind it and I'm amazed that they even say things like that but anyway we got to use the right acoustic treatment when we're managing subwoofers it's a pressure activated form of treatment that we must use because subwoofers produce low frequency pressure they are a very low frequency producing device in most of our systems they cross over at 50 cycles 60 cycles 70 cycles which the preamp then sends all energy at that crossover point to the subwoofer so you determine electronically where it crosses over at so these are all low frequency activated pressure areas and you need a pressure activated absorber to treat those within your room positioning is also critical diaphragmatic membrane and helmholtz are the only three the diaphragmatic is the one we're uh, most uh, useful for because that's where our technology platforms are based upon front wall internal cabinet fill and cabinet energy is slowed by the front wall enters the internal cabinet and is reduced even more by the structure of the cabinet which is vibrationally uh, specific to that absorber membrane same principle internal fill material front wall and cabinet just the cabinets not so dense and it's a single front wall and it's usually a membrane of, of vinyl or rubber something more flexible to move a little bit it does achieve some low uh, uh, levels of absorption sometimes but not very high rates you don't get a lot you get the low level but not necessarily a lot of it so you have to use a lot of them diaphragmatic uh, Hemholtz obviously is the one that's uh, with the slot in the chamber and all that has to be calculated in the position in the room it has to be calculated it's more frequency specific so diaphragmatic of all of them is the platform that you can really dial in get a large amount of absorption in a small amount of space so acoustical treatment no foams no building insulation remember that low frequency energy in our room is a pressure issue it needs a pressure activated device to do it which is diaphragmatic membrane or Hemholtz thank you, you enjoyed today's video if you did give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you and please if you have any questions leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you alternatively if there are other topics that you wish to discuss discuss or see discussed in a video presentation send me a, an email info at acousticfields.com and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you I release a new uh, video about every week so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.